Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Lab 207 Webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we start a new series about air. Topic for the day is going to be air pollutants. So like always, let me get you some objectives and we'll get going. By the end of this video, two things I need you to know or be able to do. The first one is to describe each of the major criteria air pollutants. The second is to explain the difference between a primary and a secondary air pollutant. So let's go ahead and jump on in by talking about air pollution first. Base level definition. Air pollution is defined as enough of any chemical particle or microorganism in the troposphere to harm people, to harm ecosystems, or to harm building materials. So if there is anything in the air in sufficient concentration to cause harm or damage, it is known as an air pollutant. Now, when we talk about air pollution, we need to look at it as a grand system. Air pollution isn't like water pollution that might be confined to a specific lake or stream or whatever. It's not like litter that is trapped in a landfill. Because we all breathe the same air and the air circulates all the way around the world, we have to think about air pollution as a global system. The air pollution that China creates flows across the Pacific to America. The air pollution that we create flows across the Atlantic to Europe. It all circulates around and around and around the globe. So. It's not like it's just my air pollution is my problem. My air pollution is everybody's problem. And it's a system just like any system that has inputs and outputs. Obviously, the inputs are the things that add air pollution to the air. So it's going to be burning of fossil fuels, organic compounds, volcanic eruptions, lightning strikes, all kinds of stuff. Things that cause air pollution are going to be our inputs. The outputs are going to be things that take that pollution out of the air. So this could be plants that suck carbon dioxide out of the air. It could be soil microorganisms that take nitrogen oxides out of the air. It could be the ocean, which absorbs huge amounts of carbon dioxide. So inputs are the things that create the pollution. Outputs are the things that take the pollution out of the air. And remember, it's a global system. My air pollution is everybody's problem. So in the 1970s, people started to realize, oh, clean air, it's a big deal. It's something we should be worried about. The air quality is bad, so we should do something about it. So the thing that they did about it was to create the Clean Air Act. This was legislation that was passed in 1970 and then subsequently enhanced in 2007 and 2009. A couple points about the Clean Air Act that you need to know. First one is that it identified six criteria air pollutants for the EPA to regulate. So these are six air pollutants that were identified as pollutants that cause significant harm to human health or to the environment or to building materials and structures. They are known as the criteria air pollutants and they are ones that the EPA specifically monitors and regulates. Now those six criteria air pollutants are sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, carbon monoxide, particulate matter, lead, and ozone. Now, as we moved on from the 1970s, there have been a couple others added. There's carbon dioxide, mercury, and VOCs. They've been added to the list. I don't know if they're specifically known as criteria air pollutants, but the EPA watches and regulates those air pollutants as well. And then, of course, like every other environmental regulation in America, this is subject to political pressure. So this list and the levels that are allowable for each of these pollutants is something that companies can go to Congress and lobby against and say, oh, I want a higher limit or I want a lower limit. Or whatever. So just like everything else, know that politics plays a role in this. In the rest of this video, we're going to spend talking about the major air pollutants. So get out that sheet of paper, get ready to start jotting down some qualities, and we're going to start with sulfur dioxide. Now, base level things you need to know about uh, sulfur dioxide it is a corrosive gas, which means it corrodes things that it comes into contact. It can be released by the burning of fossil fuels. It can also be released naturally from forest fires and volcanic eruptions. Major thing it does for our health is it is a respiratory tract irritant. So if you breathe too much of it in, it can irritate asthma, lungs, emphysema, things like that. It can also damage plants. So if there's too much sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere, it can reduce photosynthetic output and damage plant tissue. So that's sulfur dioxide. Next up are our nitrogen oxides. Now, something you need to know and recognize, when we talk about sulfur oxides, they'll be known as SOX. Our nitrogen oxides are known as NOx. The reason we use NOx is because there can be either one oxygen or two oxygens. So there's nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide. And they are both colorless, odorless gases. 
they have anthropogenic and biological sources. So for the human side of things, just like anything else, us burning things, particularly fossil fuels, releases these nitrogen oxides in nature, forest fires, volcanic eruptions, things like that, release these nitrogen oxides. Big things you need to know about them is they are a major component in the formation of tropospheric ozone, which will get kind of its own video later on. But it's a major component in the formation of tropospheric ozone. It's also a major component of photochemical smog, which we'll talk about in a moment. And it also can be an irritant to the respiratory tract. Moving along down the list is carbon oxides. Now, just like our nitrogen oxides, where it could be NO or NO2, our carbon oxides are carbon monoxide, CO, and carbon dioxide, CO2. Now, these are different from each other. Carbon monoxide comes from the incomplete combustion of a fuel. So when a fuel is burning but not burning efficiently or properly, carbon monoxide is formed. When carbon monoxide is formed, it's released into the atmosphere. This could be indoors, so if you have got a furnace that is not functioning properly, you could get carbon monoxide poisoning or pollution in your house. Also, if an engine's not running properly outside, it can release carbon monoxide. Big scary thing about carbon monoxide is it's a silent killer. It messes with your blood's ability to bind to oxygen, so if you are being poisoned by carbon monoxide, you will essentially suffocate to death over a, slow, over a period of time. Carbon dioxide is the greenhouse gas you all know about. Carbon dioxide with its two oxygens results from complete combustion. So when something is burning properly and efficiently, it will give off carbon dioxide. Big thing we worry about with carbon dioxide is its contribution to the greenhouse effect and global warming. I wanted to give you a diagram of particulate matter because there's a couple things that we need to talk about here. So particulate matter is any solid or liquid droplet or particle in the air. Breathing these in obviously is very hard on the body, and there's a couple things that you need to be aware of. So as far as particulate matter goes, it's classified according to the size of the particle. 100 micrometers, this is a fairly big particle. This size of particle is filtered out by your nose hair, so scientists don't worry too much about particles this size. Once we get to 10 micrometers, and this is known as a size of PM10, Particles that are 10 micrometers or smaller are not filtered out by nose hairs, they're not filtered out by the respiratory tract, they make it all the way down deep into your lungs. The smaller the particle, the more it can penetrate the lungs and the more damage it can cause. So things that give off particulate matter would be volcanic eruptions, wood fires, road dust, burning of fossil fuels, anything that puts like particles into the air causes this kind of pollution. They're a huge respiratory irritant. They can cause lung cancer. Um, they can cause emphysema and other breathing problems. But to reiterate, big thing to know about particulate matter, the smaller the particle, the more damage it does. A Couple things to finish up. We are almost done. So photochemical oxidants and ozone. Photochemical oxidants are, what's the best way to say this? They are pollutants that form in the presence of sunlight, so photo, right there you got sun or you got light. Um, sunlight acts on these chemicals to form oxidants. Oxidants can damage plants, they can damage building materials, they are huge respiratory tract irritants. Um, tropospheric ozone is one type of photochemical oxidant that's going to get its own video. So we know about stratospheric ozone, that is the ozone found in the stratosphere that blocks UV radiation. At ground level, ozone is very harmful to the respiratory tract and to plants and to other things. So we'll talk about how it forms later on. Just for now, lump it into this category of photochemical oxidants. Also know that these oxidants play a huge role in the formation of smog. And there are two types of smog. You've got nitrogen-containing smog, which is LA-type smog, or it's known as LA-type smog. And it's got a reddish tint, like that one right there. And then you have got sulfur-containing smog which is gray, it's known as London-type smog, and it would form a gray cloud. So depending on whether the smog is nitrogen-based or sulfur-based, it'll either be red or gray. All right, last pollutant, and then we're gonna talk about one final thing. So lead and mercury, they are both neurotoxins. They are released from the burning of coal and oil, primarily coal. Um, lead has been regulated, so for quite a while, Lead was an additive in gasoline to enhance engine performance. Um, people realized, hey, we got a ton of lead in the atmosphere. Probably a problem. Shouldn't be breathing in neurotoxins. So over the course of 20 years, government, uh, the American government phased lead out of gasoline. 
Since then, lead concentrations in the atmosphere have dropped quite dramatically. However, mercury isn't regulated. So when coal burning power plants do their thing, they release mercury into the atmosphere. That mercury gets wrapped up with the water cycle, rains down onto soils and oceans. And we talked in a previous video about how that mercury becomes part of the food chain and through bioaccumulation becomes concentrated in the tissue of some fish. It's bad for us to eat. Volatile organic compounds are your final pollutant that you need to know about. These are organic compounds that vaporize at room temperature. So you put them at room temperature, they turn into a vapor. Quickest way to identify a VOC is it's going to be those strong smells that you, well, let's be honest, you hate to admit that you like them, but you like them. So this would be smells like gasoline, nail polish remover, uh, paint, things like that. But you also know that things like perfumes, those are known as VOCs. They give off strong odor, even like a pine tree that gives off a nice Christmas piney odor. Those are VOCs that are being given off. Um, they do have a role in ozone formation. Some have been shown to be harmful to human health. Some aren't harmful to health at all. So they could be good, they could be bad. As far as we are concerned, know that they play a big role in indoor air pollution and that they have a role in the formation of ozone. Last slide for the day is to be able to compare and contrast primary versus secondary air pollutants. And this is very easy. A primary air Primary air pollutant is an air pollutant that just comes directly from the source. So this would be like carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxide, sulfur oxides, lead, mercury, all those things that we just talked about coming directly from a tailpipe or a factory or whatever. A secondary pollutant has a little chemistry involved. So if you take primary pollutant number one, put it in the atmosphere with primary number two and maybe some sunlight, you get a completely different pollutant that would be a secondary air pollutant. Or if you take, let's say, you got a sulfur oxide, mix that up with some rain, you get acid deposition, which we'll talk about later, but that would be a secondary pollutant. So if you take two primaries or multiple primaries, combine them together in the presence of sunlight or water, they change into a completely different compound, a different pollutant. That different pollutant is a secondary pollutant. So no, a primary pollutant is whatever's coming out of the tailpipe or the factory stack or whatever. A couple primary pollutants mixed together, do some chemistry, you get a secondary pollutant. Thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite. Hopefully we'll see you again.